Hey, welcome. I'm Bernardo del Castillo, and I'm one of the Rebel Featured Artists of 2023. Today, I was hoping to share a few more tips about my illustration process with you guys, and maybe some tools that are specific of Rebel. So for this illustration, I had the idea of making this sort of acrobat. I sketched a few of the poses that I had in mind. I wasn't too sure about what I wanted, so I did a few, I looked a few references and... And yeah, this can be honestly sometimes the funnest part of your process. So you want to just relax and try a few gestures, a few sketches that really speak to you. Look at anatomy, look at, yeah, whatever you think will really work. And uh, I'll show you the process and you'll see. I got a few that I was actually liking, but I ended up with something that really gave me a sense of direction that I wanted for this piece. Eventually I ended up with this one. Uh, it's expressive and kind of realistic, but it's not too stiff. So I really like the gesture that it ended up having. So we're going to work with this one from now on. In this case, I'm using thick acrylic brushes and you can really control the impasto or the paint volume depending on what you want to achieve. I went for a more painterly look here, so uh, I don't want it to be super distracting and very contrasting, but I'll, I left a little bit of impasto so that you would get it somewhere in the middle. A bit of texture, but not too much. You can always adjust it either from the brush that you're using or globally uh, if you go to the visual settings tab though. As you can see, one of the cool things about Rebel is how well it emulates actual painting.
When I was satisfied with the feel and the basic layout, I moved more towards fleshing out a concept. Um, he was not just an acrobat. He'd be like a captive bird in a cage. And I started thinking about ideas like making it something a little burlesque, something like steampunk or cabaret. Um, and so that would give me the idea of a, of a costume more like a circus act, like a magician or something like that. Anyhow, here I wanted to talk about the new brush creation tool on Rebel 6. The selection of the default brushes is pretty good, but sometimes you want something more specific, right? And in this case, I wanted a brush that was similar to the Filbert, uh, but much smoother and kind of easier to predict, uh, easier to control. And you can create them from scratch, but since I knew that I wanted to use something similar, I, I'd rather duplicate one that I know works. So what you can do is go here and you can right click on the brush and select duplicate brush preset. Then you can rename it to whatever you want. And here you can see all the details. The stroke tab controls the general values of how much the brush will flow. You can play around with all the variables and try them out depending on what you need, but yeah, just get a feel for it. Uh, when you go to the shape tab, uh, you can actually modify the tip of, your br of the brush and how it will interact with the canvas. You can pick the actual outline of the tip and how grainy the pattern will be when you're painting. Uh, this is also affected by the grain of the canvas itself that you might have set up originally. And if you do any changes, you can just try them out directly on the canvas as well. So yeah, experiment with it. I personally always like to have control over the rotation with my stylus, but it depends on your tablet. Uh, if your tablet has it, that's great, but yeah, it depends on the hardware you have. Depending on the type of brush that you're trying to modify, you're going to see a different number of variables that you can change. Um, I'm not going to change too many of them here because I want to basically make a pretty standard brush. But you would always also modify the level of impasto here, like the volume, or how much the impasto smudges other brush strokes, and yeah, a few other variables. Uh, in this case, as you can see, the rendering is grayed out uh, because this ac acrylic brush does not have that option. If you were to do an ink brush, you'd see that those options are available.
So now I've divided each of the major components of my character in a layer. And I'll skip forward a bit and show you kind of how it works. As you can see, each part is worked on a different layer. Sometimes I use a clipping mask if the layer requires a lot of detail. But in general, I can do it just by blocking the transparency and working within that layer. And that's pretty much it. Um, from there on, I just refine the look. I add more detail and I start looking at places where I can improve the overall rendering of it. I also like to adjust the lighting a bit later on in the illustration because I know better now how the atmosphere will affect my character. So in this case I wanted to light my my character from the bottom and I didn't want to have too many highlights competing for attention in the same character so I really made sure that all the lights were applied properly and there was a nice rim lighting through the whole character to really outline it from the background. I'm definitely going to refine it more later, but I think that the character is pretty much done for now. So we'll jump into the environment. For the metal fences around the cage, I'll be duplicating and morphing the shapes. This is a really huge time saver. Uh, I'll show you in a moment how it works with a smaller grid. See here I looked up some Art Nouveau metalwork references and I'm going to draw it them as a flat pattern. When I've got one side done, I'll just flip it and flatten it so that's it's one layer and I'll, I'm going to use that one as a pattern.
I'll make copies of that one and I will morph them to fit our, the perspective of our drawing like this. In this case, I will only use one control point su subdivision because the deformation isn't very complex. If you wanted to make a real uh, complex mesh, you can use more divisions. But yeah, most of the time it's with one, it's fine. Later on, I'll likely do some small modifications so that the clothing, cloning doesn't seem to, so artificial. I'll add a few details to make them unique. But there, it's pretty cool now. Now I'll go to the foreground to make our character really feel like part of this universe. Um, this can really give it a sense of place. I'm gonna put way too much detail into this robe, but uh, I wanted to get it look, looking kind of messy and worn and I really wanted to get that, that um, tactile quality to it. So yeah, it took a second. In general, you want to put more detail when there's an object interacting with our character or our center of attention and make it a little bit more abstract or more simplified when it's further away. And it's the same, uh, we continue adding more texture and contrast into the interest points. Uh, for the background, the cloning technique will save us a lot of time. All of these little cages I can just, yeah, copy around and make slight modifications so that they don't look cloned at all. Everything is pretty worn down, so I'm not doing very geometric drawing. I want it to feel organic and and I'm adding specific broken down details and connections to give it that sense of randomness and of aged. Uh, and I think that really yeah brings out the the illustration.
In general, you want to kind of get the further away the object, the lower the contrast. So it really doesn't compete with the foreground. There's one bigger cage on the left. I really want it to be a, like a secondary point of interest. So I'm going to add a lot more detail and a lot more contrast. And I'm, I wanted to give it like a banner, sort of like a carnival thing. Uh, I went with the word freedom, kind of following the idea of the caged bird uh, s s searching for freedom. But yeah, I morphed it. I wrap it around this cage, like the roof side of this cage, and you can barely read it, but it's it's pretty cool. Um, I, yeah, I don't want it to be too obvious. I don't want it to be on the nose, so I I really make it almost unreadable. And even hammering home the concept of circus again, um, I wanted to paint the roof of this of this cage with the typical kind of tent red and white patterns. Um, and I think that that really brings it up. Um, it's a bit cartoony, but it's cool. It works. And yeah, by now it's looking pretty good, but but I I can't stop myself. Just more detail, add more detail. We want to be hinting that world.
And for the background, yeah, I just generate larger, bolder shapes and don't go into too much detail because you, again, you don't want it to be competing with the foreground. And I think that for the final ambiance, uh, I think it would really work if we had some god rays. So I'm gonna use a single perspective ruler helper and I'm gonna use those lit points and I'm gonna th throw out rays of light. I'm gonna blur them out a little bit, but I also want them to keep some of the texture, give them some grainy quality. And that's it. And to finalize the, the image, I'm gonna make a copy of the whole thing and flatten it. And then I'm probably gonna adjust the levels a bit because the, the contrast can really make it pop. And there you have it. I'm pretty happy with this one. Um, if you have any questions, comments, you can always find me on Twitter on at Bernardo Delcast. Uh, and I hope you enjoyed the process. Uh, be sure to give Rebel a try. It's a lot of fun. It's a great tool. And yeah, see you on the next one.